Now here's a different video from the ones that I usually put out. I'm known for playing sandbox games uh, mostly, you know, and just use actual games as design tools as opposed to using design tools for making video games. But I don't know, I've just been playing with this uh, idea of making a Counter-Strike map, uh, CSGO map to be more specific. And uh, this video is just a recollection of that process and uh, just uh, wanted to share with you, just sort of gauge your interest in this topic and see if we can move forward from this, do something more, or this will be the last video you'll see of me doing this type of work. So what you see on the screen right now is sort of the final version that I was able to put together. And I sort of gave myself like a weekend to, to create a playable map. Playable in the sense that it's not fully detailed as obviously you can see it's just using all these like default placeholder textures, but at least it's, it's kind of fun to play with bots and uh, stick around until the end of this episode because there's some like real time sort of walkthrough as I like share like my thoughts uh, as I walk through the map. And then there's a separate video that's linked in the description with an actual playing session with bots uh, in case you want to see how much of a noob I am. Uh, just to give you some context, I've uh, been playing CSGO, I mean, I usually play CSGO for fun in my spare time, but I've been playing Counter-Strike since I was in high school in the early 2000s, almost 20 years ago. And I used to, to make maps uh, back in the day using uh, the Hammer Editor, which I've recently learned, I just came across this random uh, tutorial where apparently people making CSGO maps still use that tool, which just looks exactly the same as it used to when I was uh, doing this for fun in my youth. So I decided to give it a go, you know, set a goal to make a playable map and uh, and just time constrained in this case, like I said, a weekend. And yeah, I just recorded pretty much, not the whole process, because it was a bit more lengthy and a lot of uh, repeated processes uh, in the middle, but um, yeah, just try to like capture a few snippets to illustrate uh, some of the work that I've been doing. So I, you know, the first thing I did was uh, sort of sketch out a layout uh, on uh, Figma, which is a UI design tool. That's a vector based design tool. Uh, it's free to use, by the way. You can just create an account and it even runs in your browser. You don't even have to download it if you don't want to. But it's great for putting together like quick draft layouts in, in digital form and then using that as a reference point to start creating the actual uh, 3D world in uh, Hammer. Uh, Hammer, by the way, is included for free if you have the paid version of CSGO. Um, it's part of the software development kit or SDK. And uh, if you, you know, CSGO these days is, is a free to play game, but it doesn't include the SDK. If you want the SDK, you will have to actually pay for CSGO uh, in case you were wondering. And um, I'm also going to include the link to the playlist that I found for the tutorials on how to make CSGO maps because it's like pretty comprehensive and it basically goes from the very beginning on how to install the piece of software on all the way to like how to like optimize everything and how to like make decisions on how to design the actual map layouts and all the considerations that you have to take in order for the actual gameplay to be uh, fun to to watch is a very well put together uh, tutorial series and I highly recommend it. And uh, what else? Uh, yeah, so like I said, this hasn't changed a whole lot since I last uh, tried it, at least the, the basics of on, on how to put the game together. I used to make this for the initial engine for Counter-Strike, which I think is the gold source or something like that. And this is right now CSGO is running on the source engine. And there's even rumors that it's going to be ported to, to the source two engine because of the Half-Life uh, Alex uh, VR version that was just released. So this might be uh, the last few months of, uh, of this being a thing. So that's, there, there's something about that too, that uh, I don't know, it just got some like nostalgia factor around it. And uh, I think that's one of the main motivations uh, to do this. Uh, in any case, um, the, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is to, like like I said before, to sort of gauge your interest in this. Because um, right now the map, while it is playable, uh, I've spent quite a bit of time tweaking things, like making changes to the layout constantly in order to balance things out. One of the things that you want to make sure is that 
you know, the, both teams playing at the same time, the terrorists and the counter terrorists, like one doesn't have an advantage of the other. And there's like enough areas for defending and attacking and where the conflicts, uh, conflict points are sort of set up. There's a lot of trial and error that happens and you can get so far with bots. But if this is something that uh, you guys are interested in, what I'll probably do is set up uh, a live stream. And by the way, I'll, uh, one thing that usually happens, quick parenthesis here is that you know, I, I tend to, whenever I like find something interesting, uh, I tend to go all in on it and like just get super burnt. And then after two weeks, I'm like over it. Uh, so this, this is why I was kind of hesitant on, on posting this video, but um, I'm still pretty like bullish on this idea. Uh, but if you guys are too, what I was saying is maybe you can set up a live stream, you know, announce it ahead of time so that everyone knows and like put you a couple of you guys on a server and actually play it with real players because that's when you really gauge how well uh how well the map plays because right now with bots uh the pathfinding is kind of automatically generated i think you can edit it but it's not it is definitely not that good but uh, i couldn't figure out how to like make quick edits on on the pathfinding and obviously i didn't have a lot of time to do that so if this is something that that's worth pursuing i'll probably like yeah like i said get real players in it and and figure out what uh, needs to happen in order to make it an even more playable and more much more enjoyable experience and eventually i think the most fun part will be to actually add details to this map because right now like i said it's all placeholder textures it's like pretty rough around the edges the geometry is not great looking um so uh yeah i'll go in great detail about those aspects uh in the next part of this video that's coming right up where i walk you through the 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 map uh so i included a bunch of links in the description to this playlist that i mentioned and to uh the playthrough uh session as well and uh, there's uh, links to download it um with instructions on how to get it running because i'm not going to upload this to the workshop because it you know that requires a lot of extra work that i didn't want to do and it's kind of a very incomplete map anyway so i didn't want to upload it to steam workshop anyways so uh here's what we're going to do i'm going to pass it on to my other self that's in the game and uh he'll take it from there I'm gonna first, uh, let's see, let's actually go up in the air and show you what this looks like from up above. So, you know, in general, the layout is pretty simple and bare bones. I don't like maps that are like labyrinths. I want maps that are like fast paced and like easier to navigate and to remember. And here, while we still have all these like dev placeholder textures uh, and everything pretty much looks the same. I think uh, there's certain areas that are uh, memorable just by the shape uh, and the nature of the geometry that I put together. So uh, for example here, uh, I kind of picked this orange texture just to like make it a bit more unique. Um, initially I think this was gonna be a storm drain but uh, I think now it's better suited for a uh, some kind of inner courtyard. There's gonna be a lot of action in, uh, happening here. This is where both teams uh, kind of meet. I think uh, counter-terrorists reach this area at the same time. So, uh, terrorists meet uh, like this area right here. Uh, and there's some like interesting hiding spots, but uh, these are bangable walls too, so you have to consider that as well. Um, obviously, once real players get in the map, uh, if we ever decide to move forward with this project, uh, there's going to be a lot of tweaks because bots can get you so far uh, and they kind of get stuck. I think there's probably a way to like tweak the pathing of the bots a little bit because it's done all automatically. Uh, I remember doing that manually, uh, like adding waypoints um, when, when I used to make maps for like CSGO, uh, sorry, for CS uh, 1.6 and 1.5 and all those versions. Um, at the same time, another thing that I opted for not doing is uh, adding artificial light. So there's some dark spots here, but like I left chunks of the potential ceiling open. So the sunlight kind of helps out. Uh, some of these areas are still pretty dark, um, but um, yeah, I wanted to not add artificial light. I mean, the sun is artificial too, but uh, oh, also interesting, the inner side of this truck is empty. I think all the models are empty on the inside because they're dead on the inside. Now, um, I think I just need to add a second model that includes the cabin or has like opaque windows. But uh, these are like climbable. They have their own uh, hit areas so you can climb inside. Um, these props are just totally temporary. I think these this 
building actually is going to be much larger. It's going to reach up to this area because um, otherwise it doesn't make sense. It's just like blocks and it's like a fake paintball course <laughs> the way it is right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, here's one of the bomb sites. Um, it has like a, a little nook here that you can plant that you're like, well, in this area, you're kind of exposed on this side, but you can also climb up in this uh, truck and you're only exposed on this side or this side. So there's some areas uh, for protection. You can even plant like right here next to the truck. Maybe there should be a box here now that I think about it. But these are all things that are kind of come up and be more interesting once, uh, again, once you get real players. Um, which places to jump back up. Uh, and as you can see, this this will benefit from having a full ceiling because otherwise this room doesn't make sense. But the interesting thing is that you can climb up uh, on this uh, little truck and that will give you some some sort of vantage point. Uh, vantage point. Uh, this stairs, I'll, like flip them over to the other side. I, I think I initially like put them on this side, but just to improve the timings. That's another thing that I that I need to properly test because I did some back of the napping. Uh, sorry, back of the napkin uh, timing. Uh, for basically how long it takes for counter terrorists to reach one of the bomb sites and the other, and at which point they all meet at these conflicting points uh, where most of the battles are going to be taking place. Uh, I think it's pretty balanced. I kind of eyeballed it. I haven't like mathematically like went in like measure every potential route because I keep making changes constantly. But I think just in general, it feels like the timing. It's I would say seventy percent there. Uh, cover it's another big thing that i wasn't sure how to address i'm not a huge fan of uh, i was hoping to see if i could get like, let me switch to the cts real quick um i was hoping to maybe get away with uh not adding random crates and boxes and things i wonder if 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 that's a possibility i only added two one on bomb side a and another one on bomb side b which for some reason they keep disappearing from the ra radar like the first round they're there and then like they, they're gone so i might be doing something wrong uh you also probably notice the bloom it's just like whenever you look at something dark and bright it just like keeps coming up and down that's because i didn't bother editing any of the default settings when it comes to lights there's no sounds the materials all pretty much sound the same aside from this like metal sound effect which obviously this is going to be a decal it's not going to be like an actual like border that's extruded from the ground i just i wanted to like temporarily put something together for this video to like test things out see if i liked if i remember uh the way i did things but um yeah, I'm pretty happy, man, with with the with the way this this map uh, is uh, put together, and uh, I think there's some some potential here for for a fun map. One thing that I will tell you is that if you want to see me play this map and see how bad I am at it, and you know, just be able to see it in action, I'm gonna include a second video that's linked in the description of this one. Uh, I probably already mentioned that, but um, yeah, it's I didn't want to include it on this one because otherwise it's gonna be too long. But uh, yeah, you can see me play with a whole bunch of bots. Uh, it's not, yeah, I'm, I'm not good at the game even with bots, uh, but uh, at least you'll you'll see where different uh, strategies are sort of taking place and whatnot. And I'm also going to include a, a zip file in the description of this video so you can download this version of the map if you want to play yourself with bots. Uh, there's going to be like a like a text file with instructions uh, if you want to if you want to use it because um, you might have to copy some files uh, manually but um, I didn't want to publish this in the workshop because there's a lot of extra work that's required for you to post it in the workshop like I wouldn't post something in the workshop without a raider or you know things like that so this is like as bare bones as it gets uh, honestly I just want to gauge your opinion on on what this uh type of project uh, if this is something that you might be interested in uh, seeing more uh, honestly the most fun of this whole thing is going to be adding details uh because obviously you can see this like very rough geometry like these curves are terrible we can definitely improve a lot of this uh, right now um is it net graph one yeah so I'm, I'm getting here. Let's go into no clip. Uh, I'm getting like almost 400 frames per second at 4K with max settings. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of room uh, in terms of detailing that we can add all kinds of props and things like that. But 
because this is not, you know, a city skylines type of project or 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 a transport fever or any like sandbox games that I played before, I wanted to like sort of run this by you all and and see what you guys uh, think. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of had a lot of fun putting this together. Hopefully that will uh, remain. Let me know again what you think in the comments if you have uh, better ideas. But uh, yeah, anyways, uh, please uh, don't forget to check out the full uh, gameplay video. Again, linked in description. And if you uh, yeah, if you have anything to say, leave it in the comments. Uh, other than that, just share this with anyone that you may uh, know that enjoys map making or Cisco or things of that nature. But uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in uh, the next one.